day five of vacation. We're gonna do another split day where we do two places in one day because right now, which it's almost 11 actually, getting a late start today, but ever since it's four in the morning till three in the afternoon, it's a 50% chance of rain every hour. But so far it's sprinkled really lightly for less than one minute. But we decided it'd be best to go somewhere where we can be right by the car. Right here, we're only 100 feet away from the car. We kind of need the beach bag to put the, those in. Because I can't tear, carry the whole black cub down there. Yeah, I do. That way I have a variety. Yeah, but we're close to the car. In that pile. Uh, anyway, we decided to be a, the best idea would be to go somewhere where we're really close to the car in case it does start sprinkling. We can come set in it until it stops or whatever. Or if it starts pouring down for a real long period, then we can give up. But by 3 o'clock, uh, the chance of rain goes back down to 0%. Will be fine, but I figured they're going to be biting uh, because of the uh, storm coming through tonight. It's going to get down all the way down to 41 degrees, folks. So we're, the hot weather is officially over with. Um, tomorrow and Friday, yeah, both Thursday and Friday, the high temperatures are only going to be 61 degrees. So we're going to really see the crappie and walleye pick up compared to what we have been. It's mostly been large mouth fish in this trip so far. Uh, the walleye did not bite both days that we went to the strip mine. I didn't catch a single walleye and barely caught any cropping. It was mostly just small large mouth. We had our best luck here back on Sunday. And then we did really good at my friend's private lake. So we're gonna come here again for a couple hours till maybe 2 o'clock, 1.30. I'm gonna say 1.30. And then uh, I'm gonna hit another river up that has walleye and sauger in it later in the afternoon. I'd rather catch crappie than bass. But then bass were big though, so. Got one! Big spinnerbait bass! Oh yeah! It's another three pounder! <laughs> oh, it might even be bigger. This thing's really fighting, Wilma. Oh my god! Wow! Big spinnerbait bass. Start through spinnerbait. Oh my goodness, it's a big one. Yeah, he's three. Wow! It's a real large mouth too, so far, it looks like it. Yep. Oh boy! Wow! Boy, he's trying to go in every rock possible. Wow! That's a nice bass, guys. Well, one minute. One minute, Wilma. That's all it took. Caught him on a half ounce chartreuse, double gold bladed spinnerbait. And it's once again a real large mouth. Here's the waterfall, one of my favorite spots. When the bike's going, it's just going here. Man, good start. He's about 16 inches. He might not quite be right at three, but he's close. He's two and a half, two, three quarters. Nice bass nonetheless. I love this one of those big spinnerbaits when I first go up to the hole to get the big boy's attention first. Alright, we're going to get her back in. Uh, 
Nonetheless, it's a good start, guys. All right. I, I, I threw it right to the waterfall right there, and I went one, two, three, four, and it started reeling in real slow. One, two, three, four. And he was on there almost immediately. I switched to the, from the crankbait to a crappie jig. Come back and she's holding a smallmouth in her hand. It's about three quarters of a pound. Maybe, that's a pound, yeah. Oh man, he's bleeding. I'll have to go get pliers, he's bleeding. not bad, hon. Here, hold him up. Don't drop it. Yeah. That's a nice small mouth. Alright, she caught a three quarter of a pound small mouth here. Not too bad. Stay just like that. There you go. Good job. Now we got two different kinds. Now we just gotta get some crappie. She caught him on a Authentic moxie grub. All right, or a pulsar swim bait, I mean. Chartreuse and orange core. This is, this is what she caught him on. Pulsar swim bait. Hopefully he'll be okay. Oh, she's got one, folks. Yeah, I was making sure my camera was on. It's a big bass again. Hey, it paid off finally. It took you about a half an hour, but you got it. On the swim bait again. He's a two pounder. All right. Hey, not bad. It took you a while, but you got, well, you were patient enough, you got it. The crappie ain't biting though. Well, you won't catch a crappie on that, it's too big. But I tried and gave up. All right, folks, I'll show you this bass she caught. Another real large mouth. Like the spotted bass ain't even in here no more. About a pound and three quarter, pound and a half. Not bad though. Get him back in. Nice one. See, I might try night crawlers. I, I'll be able to catch bass on worms if I move them around. Got it! <laughs> oh, in that hole! <laughs> oh, I just caught a bass inside that hole. And once again, it's a real large now. This one's a little small. He's the smallest one of the day so far. About three quarters of a pound. Well, tied with a small mouth, but smallest large mouth. He was inside that little 
hole in there on the wall in one foot of water, exactly about 12 inches of water. Alright folks, we're going to get him back in. Not too bad. Let's see. You just never know there could be more than one laying up in there. Probably not, though. No. If there is, I don't spook him. He was just sitting there waiting for food. Pretty cool. why but the water is about 20 degrees colder over here really odd real cold compared to standing over there I don't know what the explanation for that would be River, but about a mile downstream at a little low well water bridge there's one other person here uh, so I'm going to fish the right side of this hole and I'm going to fish the bedrock. Might be able to get one or two fish, that's all I can do. I think I'll probably get one or two, but you never know. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm glad that weather cleared up quick. It wasn't supposed to get clear till 3, 3 o'clock. <laughs> huh? I know, me too. I, I should have left a lot. I should have got up earlier. We caught four at the waterfall. They were all two pounders. There we go. Oh yeah. Nice bass. Boy, they've been biting all week long. I tell you, we went one day and caught 50. We caught, we went to the waterfall the first half of the day and caught five three pounders and seven crappie. Left there and went to my buddy's private farm pond and caught 30 bass. And about half of them were three or four pounds. <laughs> And seven catfish. That's a large mouth. Not, not too bad. Get him washed off. So. Yeah, there is some nice ones. I used to above the interstate years ago. He's about a, about a pound. My first fish here at this spot. I got my camera recording. I, I make videos. Oh yeah. 
crappie. Yeah, that's what I'm wanting. I didn't get a single one at the waterfall. Them damn dead leaves, there's thousands of them and they're going in a big circle there and you can't, your lure gets hung up every time. <laughs> All right, folks, I got a, my first crappie of the day. I'm using a Charlie Brewer slider grub, pink and half pink and half green with a quarter ounce jig head. He's a black crappie about seven inches, almost eight, maybe now it's seven, seven inch. I'm gonna keep this for a minute so I can show her. She's getting a drink. That's what we're after. I'm gonna go later and fish for sauger and walleye up at St. Jen. No, I caught three of them the other day. They're in here down further, but the only place I know how to get here is Sea, Rock, sea Highway, but I know there's gotta be some other accesses. I'll just have to look. I caught a bass and a crappie already. Yeah. I caught a one pound bass and a crappie, hun. Right, I'm gonna get her back in. I've had her out of the water a little bit. Crappie number one. Damn deadly. <laughs> huh. Oh, it's a, it's a hybrid bluegill. Wow. Yeah. Look, it's a mix between a green sunfish and a bluegill. Look at that. That's a hybrid bluegill. All right, folks, I just caught a hybrid bluegill. It's a natural hybrid bluegill. It's a mix between a green sunfish and a bluegill. You can tell by the gill plate, but the body is not a typical green sunfish. It does have a little bit of the orange tail fin right here, but it's also got the characteristics of a regular bluegill. That's pretty cool. Something different. You're hung again on that same thing. Second location for the day is Ten Hill Four. My main purpose is to here at Sauger and Walleye because they were not biting in the strip mine, and uh, I've been catching a lot of bass and crappie mostly the last couple of days. So I'm looking to kind of get something different. I'll also catch white bass accidentally fishing for walleye, so but they're not of any size lately in this river. Uh, they're bigger in the spring when they make their annual run out of the Mississippi River. But usually in the autumn, you catch the smaller ones. They're usually the ones that were just born this year. And they do grow faster than what you think. They can grow nine inches in their first year. So that's typically what they are. Every one's about the same size, eight to nine inches. Once in a while, you'll get one that remains in the river and just stays there. Uh, I'm not saying I've never caught any big ones in the fall, because I have. Uh, I've caught them all the way up to 12 or 13 inches once in a while. It depends on the water level. When the Mississippi is really high, it keeps the, keeps the river pushed back, then they tend to be bigger. But right now, this year has been pretty, severe as far as drought, so the water levels have, have remained 
pretty constantly low throughout the whole summer. So not really many larger white bass in here. And also same applies to the walleye structure. Their biggest ones you're gonna catch is gonna be in March and April. lucky. Uh, I've caught a, uh, in fact the 24 incher that I caught my biggest one ever which is, was right here in front of me in the first hole was caught during the month of May and I have caught them up to 18 inches. Uh, you will catch you'll catch them up to 18 even when it's low like it is now generally the majority of them are 14 and 15 inches and under. So we'll just see, you just never know. Thank God there's a deer that's made a trail down here. There's, there's a lot of cockle birds that I do not want on me. Beggar lice and all that st fun stuff. And I'm trying to avoid them at all costs. Um, I'm by myself because Wilma does not like doing the waiting very hardcore like I do and I explained to her that I'm going like six or seven holes down and I'm going to be constantly moving so she's fishing a sandbar up for me and it's a real long hole she's just going to stay up there and fish with worms so when I get done I'm just going to meet up and I'm just going to go up where she's at at the end of the day when it's getting dark and meet back up with her I really wish she would go with me but I understand she don't like wading in water up to her shoulders to get to the next hole and just constantly moving. So, uh, it's gonna be me, guys. And she'll be, able, she'll be able to see the fish I catch on the video, so it's not a real big deal. There's a school of shad out here, folks. Look at this. Big old ball of shad.
There we go. All right, fish number two. It's big. All right, it's a big bass. Wow, it's three pounds again. Finally, maybe they're just start, starting to pick up or it took me a while to find them. It may have been worth walking down here. I just gotta get the right kind. I need a walleye, I'm pumped up for walleye guys. Totally pumped up, nice no, two pounds. It's a two pounder and it's a real large mouth. It's a nice one. Not bad, all right. Caught a lot of half decent large mouths this trip. This vacation. All right, on the white pulsar swim bait. About two pounds even. Real large mouth. Well, I got in with something decent. Still got a long ways to go and not enough time, though. All right. See if there's one more over there. 